Hello everyone, today we will make a motor driver circuit. Suppose I have to work on a project that involves controlling motors with microcontrollers, like a land following robot. For starters, let's check if the motor is working or not. Oops, what happened? The motor requires much more voltage and current than what this onboard voltage regulator can handle, due to which it gets very hot and the IC reaches its thermal breakdown temperature which leads to shutting down of the IC. It will only turn on now once the temperature has fallen down to its safe limit. If this motor can do that much to a voltage regulator, just imagine the catastrophe had I powered it with the output pin of that mega IC. This tells us why we can't use microcontroller directly with motor and need some circuit in between them to safely and efficiently control the motors. That circuit will be the motor driver circuit. Motor driver circuit should serve two purposes at bare minimum. First, controlling the rotation direction of the motor and second, controlling the speed of the motor. Controlling the speed is just a matter of sending out the PWM signal from any PWM enabled pin of the microcontroller. But controlling the direction is a bit tricky. To change the direction of the motor, one has to simply reverse the polarity of the power supply, which is easy to do manually, but it makes no sense to control it manually, right? For this purpose, there exists a famous circuit called H bridge. It contains four switches arranged in a manner that looks like the English letter H. It is a very clever way for changing the direction of the motor. When these two switches are on, the current flows in one direction and when these two switches are on, current flows in opposite direction, changing the direction of rotation of the motor. The switches in same branch should never turn on simultaneously as it will lead to a dead short circuit of the power supply. Now the switches chosen must be such that it can be controlled with digital signals like a relay, a BJT, a MOSFET or an IGBT. Using a relay will not be a good idea as they are slow and not efficient so that option gets ruled out easily. Most of the motors used in robots are 12 volt or 24 volt ones with current consumption of a few amps. A BJT would be better suited if the motor is small and needs less current, so we cross that out. An IGBT would be great if the motor is very big and requires large currents as they are inefficient when used for smaller loads which is clearly not the case here. And we cross that option too. Finally, we are only left with MOSFETs and that is indeed the most widely used component for an edge bridge. This is the perfect time for me to take a moment and suggest you guys to watch my MOSFET basics video for proper understanding in the next discussion. We know well that there are two types of MOSFETs available, which leaves us with 16 combinations of MOSFETs in the edge bridge. But if you have watched the basics video I just mentioned, you know that for high side switching, P channel MOSFETs are recommended and for low side switching, N channel MOSFETs are recommended. So that's what I finalized and made this circuit for prototyping. Let's discuss its working. Initially, all the MOSFETs gates are held low, which means P channel MOSFETs will be on and N channel will be off. This mode is called braking mode, which I will talk about more in a bit. If any of the button is pressed, the corresponding end channel will turn on and motor will start rotating. Pressing the other push button will make the motor rotate in opposite direction than the previous one. If both push buttons are pressed, the circuit again enters the braking mode. After building the circuit on breadboard, we can see it is working as expected. But wait a minute. If you look closely, you will notice that the motor experiences a torque if its direction is changed instantaneously. A motor can be modeled as an inductor in series with a resistor and a voltage source. We know that an inductor don't like a sudden change in current and most of the times can damage our circuit. This particular motor is small and the torque will be much more if the motor is having a greater inductance. In relays to neutralize this effect we use a diode, but here the diode cannot be used. So to resolve this, the simplest method is to use braking mode before changing the direction. The braking mode will apply brake to motor's rotation and stop it. When the circuit is in braking mode, the motor's inductance can discharge before it starts charging again. Now back to the circuit. In this circuit, I am applying 12 volts to the gate through this push button which is enough to let the MOSFET turn on completely. But using a microcontroller, this is not possible. That's why adding a MOSFET driver will make sense. So after adding the MOSFET driver, I tested it with push buttons and PWM signals from an Arduino. 
you can see that the motor changes its speed according to the position of the potentiometer. This means our circuit is working fine. So I made the final circuit. Now generally you would want to control two motors at once. For that, two of these circuits will be required. And to avoid soldering complexity, I converted the schematic to PCB and copied over the circuit to the other half for the second motor. I would like to go over a few things in the circuit. I have added a P-channel MOSFET here which will work as the enable switch for the circuit. As the MOSFET is P-channel, 0 volts will turn it on and therefore I label the enable input as enable bar. But if you like to bypass it, you can just short these headers which will save you from using the MOSFET and its driver here. Secondly, the MOSFET driver we will use can withstand an absolute maximum of 20 volts between its VCC and ground pin. You can power the driver directly with motor power if it's within 20 volts. But what if you have to use a motor requiring more input voltage? That is what these headers are for. If you are using motors of less than 20 volts, short these headers with VCC terminal which will supply the driver from motor power. Otherwise, short it to the 5 volt header. And now you will have to apply 5 volts from this header to power the driver with 5 volts. Finally, I have added a MOSFET between gate terminals and motor driver output. There is no specific reason to do that, but MOSFETs are also used as gate drivers for MOSFET itself and I have added it just in case I need it. For now, we will bypass it. After this, I uploaded the Gerber to glcpcb.com, ordered it at just $2 and received it in 6 days. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. JLCPCB is the largest PCB manufacturing company in China with more than 10 years of experience. Upload your Gerber files and optimize it with a variety of options available. And if you have any doubt, you can contact their customer support, which reply really fast and are very helpful. Like always, the quality is perfect and we are ready to go in. So I grabbed all the components and before soldering them, I shorted the enable headers, drive supply pin to VCC as I won't be using a motor that requires more than 20 volts for now and shorted the gate source of the extra MOSFET to bypass it. Then I started soldering the other components. During designing, I made a little mistake. I connected the 47 ohms at the output of driver to the ground while it should be connected to the gate terminal. So I fixed it while soldering. After soldering is complete, I applied 12 volts to it, common the ground between PCB and Arduino, made necessary connection and tested it with digital and analog signals. The motor is working as expected with both the signals. The current consumption and hence the speed has increased drastically and this might be due to the fact that breadboard rays restrict the current through it to 1 or 1.5 amps max. With this, we are done with our project. Before signing off, I would like to tell a little about these two ICs. One is called L293D and another is L298N. They are integrated motor driver circuits. They are a complete package for controlling two motors using a microcontroller. The difference between them is the power dissipation they are rated for. L298 is more beefy than L293D. The L298N requires some protection circuitry and if you don't want to make one, you can just buy it as a module. Can you believe this complete board can be replaced just by this small board? Amazing right? That's why I love electronics and my enthusiasm never dies for them. And that will be all for this video. If you like this video and learned something, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, till next time.